Hello, I'm Lisa Spooner. In this demo on using tracking protection lists and ActiveX filtering in Internet Explorer 9 is from my CompTIA Security Plus training course. Next, let's talk about tracking protection. In Internet Explorer, tracking protection used to be called in private filtering and needed to be turned on every time, like in private browsing. But now you could just turn it on once and it'll stay on no matter how many browser windows that you open and close unless you turn it off, of course. The reason that you may choose to use tracking protection is that there are websites out there that include some content from third-party websites. And this content is pretty much normally advertisements. The fact that the third-party content is on the website that you have chosen to view means that that website you're visiting is also sending information about you back to that third party. And over time, the third party will build up a profile about you. So tracking protection blocks third-party content and thus blocks that third party getting the information about you. But once you turn tracking protection on, not all third-party content is just blocked outright. For a site's content to be blocked, that website must be on your tracking protection list. So to enable tracking protection, we click on the tools icon, go down to safety, and then click on tracking protection. And that takes us to the add-on manager because tracking protection is actually an add-on for IE. And like I said, it uses lists to determine which websites to block content and tracking from. And there are two different types of lists. There's your personalized list that once enabled, keeps track of who is keeping track of you and starts to block them. And you can always manually add or remove sites from this personalized list as well. Then there are a number of organizations that publish lists for you to use. And you find those from this link down here. So here's the list of lists. And these different organizations are not directly affiliated with Microsoft. Instead, they have their own agenda based on if they were created for kids, teens, adults, or with other criteria. This is where you would do some research and pick a list that fits your needs. I'm going to use the fanboy ad block list because that's the list that I use with my Firefox browser and I've always had good results. So once you pick a list, you just click add and then add list. And then we can close this window. And it didn't automatically show up in this add-ons window. So let's close it and then reopen it. There it is. The fanboy list is enabled. And I'm also going to enable my personalized list at this time. If I double click on my personalized list, you can see that Internet Explorer has already started a list for me based on my previous browsing habits, but that they're all set to undecided or allowed because I haven't turned this feature on before today. So instead, I'm going to set them all to automatically block and then click OK. Then as I'm browsing, if I find that things are starting to get blocked that I actually want to see, I can go back to this list and tweak it a little bit. OK, that's it for tracking protection. Did you notice that up here in the safety menu that there's also an ActiveX filtering option? Well, we know that we've already had some ActiveX policy built into our security zones, mostly for unsigned ActiveX, and this is a good thing. But what if I wanted to block all ActiveX and then maybe allow it only on certain sites as needed or even allow specific controls like just Flash, just Silverlight, just QuickTime, something like that, if there were a business reason to do so? Well, before we turn this on, first let's go to a website that has a lot of ActiveX. Got one in my favorites. This is a test drive web page that Microsoft created for users to try out and understand ActiveX filtering. But it looks like all of my ActiveX is being blocked by my tracking protection. So let's turn that back off really quick. Right click, disable. Close, and then let's refresh the page. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a lot going on. We've got flashing, we've got moving, we've got sound, we've got a lot happening. Um, down here, there is a Silverlight ActiveX, lots of different Flash ActiveX, and these yellow boxes are courtesy of Microsoft's test drive, like I said, showing us how this works. There's a QuickTime ActiveX plugin up there. All right, let's see what happens when we turn ActiveX filtering on. Safety, ActiveX filtering. Now we didn't get any sort of confirmation or are you sure, but if we go back here, you can see that it is ticked. And then when I hit refresh, 
every ActiveX control is now blocked. This happens to be a clever website that has static ads in HTML video to take its place. So now we have a static image and HTML video. But blocking ActiveX controls is not always this seamless. I have another page bookmarked that simulates what happens when you reach a website where you do want to view that ActiveX content, and you do trust the website. Now this website has a less graceful way of handling ActiveX being blocked. Instead of those nice static elements taking the place of the blocked ActiveX, we just get a blank box with this blue no symbol in the corner. But let's say that this content is something that we just can't live without. So to allow ActiveX on this website, we click the blue no symbol that's up on the address bar. We go down to turn off ActiveX filtering. And this time the browser refreshes the page automatically and now we can see that ActiveX old IE9 beta video that we needed to see. Clicking that no sign and turning off the filter adds this website to a whitelist. So now, unless I turn the filter back on, every time I visit this website, ActiveX will be allowed. And this goes for the whole site, not just this one web page. See if I go back to the other test drive page, you can see that ActiveX is allowed here as well because it's part of the same website. So let's go to a different website. Here at trainsignal.com, we can see by the blue no symbol that some content is being filtered on this site. Let's try and find it. It's this promo video right here. One issue with ActiveX filtering is that you get a less than accurate error message from Flash. It's actually prompting us to install Flash instead of telling us to turn off the ActiveX filter. This happens a lot, so be aware that even though we do have Flash installed, the filter is blocking it from working. So if you have a user complaining that Flash needs to be installed, maybe the ActiveX filter could actually be the culprit. See? And click that video again. And now with the filter turned off, we could watch this video, but I'm going to go ahead and close it. And I did say that I would show you the cross-site scripting filter, so let's find that real quick. I'm going to go back to the Internet Options, this time from the Tools menu, and back on the Security tab, in the Custom Settings for each zone, all the way down at the bottom, in the Scripting section, is this little radio button for the cross-site scripting filter. This does help prevent cross-site scripting when you use Internet Explorer, but do not rely on it as a catch-all and then forgo other prevention methods. The filter is on by default, and please, please keep it on. The only time that you would want to turn it off temporarily is if you are troubleshooting an issue where IE tells you that the XSS filter is blocking you. And then when you're done troubleshooting and you've figured out your problem, turn it back on. Okay, that's it. Let's head back to the slides.